In reality, every born again believer knows what that's like. Because that's what we were. We were separated from God. Until we met Jesus and He changed our life. And we reunited, reunited us with the Father. For the first time, we come alive. Those who are dead have no idea they're dead. They have no idea their spirit is not living within them. So they don't have no idea what fellowship with God is until they come alive. And, you know, I believe with the message that's going to be brought forth this morning, I believe God's going to elaborate greatly on the importance of His grace to get us to that place where our spirit comes alive. Um, so before they come and bring the message, I got to witness several times throughout the last uh, rotation, I, I guess you could call it a discipleship home, that we had many people come through. Uh, quite a few times I get to see on, on, on it's, well, I say rare occasions, but it's not really rare when you got people living with you six months at a time. But to actually see and watch a spirit come alive, alive in somebody that one that was dead or asleep, and we were privileged with seeing that on quite a few occasions. And um, one such individual, my brother Cam. Mr. Jellyfish Man himself. He was with, well, he's lived with me off and on for a year. Today is, is, is today is the, it's Tuesday, because today's what, the 10th? Yes. So on the 12th, uh, will be his one year after we come to the discipleship home, clean from any drugs and, and the mess. Most importantly, um, he had some pretty thick scales on his eyes concerning God. Told me up front, and I'm not going to get to his testimony. I'm going to let him share it with you this morning. Yes, for real, man. Yeah. Um, but he told me up front, I don't really do the Jesus thing, dude. That's pretty much what his, his statement was to me. And, and my statement to him was somewhere along the lines of, that's all right, he does you. you know. And once you meet him, you'll realize you know, all the things that you've been missing. And he knew the Lord. It's just he, his eyes were closed through a lot of circumstances. So, But he's been a wonderful friend. Uh, he keeps me on my toes. Uh, so this is a perfect opportunity for me to get him back. So Cam, come on up and share your testimony with everybody. Everybody welcome. Cam. Jesus, I guess in high school, like, like my my wrestling team's motto was like wrestle for God, so it was all about wrestling for God. And then I left high school, and it was like out in the real world. Um, I hit, you know, I went to university, lived on campus, you know, that's the land of fruit and nuts. So, <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, I don't know, it, I mean, it took me about a year to just kind of fall away from all that. And just a lot of things started happening, and I, and I just gave up on them. Um, I mean, I went to UNC Charlotte, and then I went down to Wilmington, and I, like, I was doing fine down there. I had a um, 40 hour week job, I was going to school, and but there's still something missing there. Um, and then I got hit by a car. So, and I'd always dabbled in other things, but when I got hit by a car, it became like solely pain pills. It was like, I mean, they gave me whatever I wanted. Um, so I came home and I went back to Charlotte and I guess.
is the enemy just kept bringing them to me because like, everywhere I went, it was like, oh, he does pain pills, he does pain pills. Like, oh, well, I'm going to keep doing pain pills then. And then I'd get my prescriptions and you know, I'd give my pain pills away. And it's just like, that was like my slow descent right there. Like, it wasn't that bad yet. And then I come home from Charlotte because I lost my place down there. And I get home and it's like pain pill central on Winston, so I started using everywhere, any way I could, um, you know, I stole just about everything out of the house that was worth anything, uh, got messed up with the wrong crowds, um, somebody introduced me to stealing cars, and so I started stealing cars, and, um, I mean, it was just, everything was so easy. It's like, it's always there. So Something always put it there in front of me. And, um, I mean, honestly, I still have to give myself a lot of that. Uh, it's like a battle that I've still been working on. Um, and it got so bad that, like, you know, I lost my entire family. Everybody found out that I stole stuff in the house. So the whole side of it, like, one side of the family started hating me, and then my mom found out about some stuff, and... Her whole side of the family, like, I mean, I was invisible to the whole family, so, like, you know, screw it, I got nobody, you know, and I kept trying and trying and trying on my own, I don't know if anybody knows anything about opiate addiction, but when you, it starts out, you feel good, and it's all about just feeling good, you know, and taking the pain away and then escape, but then you start to get physically dependent on it, and you get sick when you don't have it, so then it becomes... Well, I'm just trying not to be sick, you know, I'd shoot up in the morning just to feel right again and then went on my adventure and shot up again to get high. And I just went on and on and on and I'd try, couldn't get off, two days later I'd be shaking and like laying in bed sweating so I had to have somebody go out and get it for me and I just, I could not do it. Um, so I decided, you know, I guess I'm be a junkie for life. It's like this is what, this is the life that I was born into. I guess like, you know, what's the point? Why, like, why am I going to die a junkie when I could just like, you know, go off now? So one night I went down. Um, I had stolen three cars that week, so I had about three thousand dollars in my pocket and about twenty-five hundred dollars worth of heroin which is enough to put down probably an elephant. And I did it all that night within about two hours, just trying to like, in my mind, I just wanted to slip away, you know, and like, they get that nod, so I was like, you know, why not just like fall out into sleep and, and just never come back. And for some reason, I wasn't even nodding out at the end of it, thank God. And I woke up the next morning, and I was like, well, I can't even, like, I got hit by a car, like, this happened, I've been shot at, um, my friend got shot 37 times, seven times in the back of the head, and he's still alive, and he was standing in front of me when it happened. So it's like, somebody wants me alive, apparently. So I was like, all right, called Dr. Chad up, you know, man, I, I need help. I don't know what to do. I need you to take me to a medical detox facility. Well, the plan was to get a medical detox and at least so I could get on methadone because I wasn't trying to quit yet. And he actually brought me to the house of David just like randomly at 9 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> and I walk in and, you know, Justin knows nothing about me and everybody's sitting around the table. It's like chaotic. So everybody's like cleaning up dinner. Like, why am I here? Like, pull up and there's dogs barking and like, it looks like Sanford and Son. I'm like, dude, what, what am I doing? <laughs> like, what am I doing up in here? <laughs> it's like, I, I don't need to be here. I need to be in a hospital or something, you know? And, um, I had had one more fix before I left, so, you know, I was like, man, I ain't here. Like, I'm about to just leave tomorrow. Like, I ain't trying to be here. And so, so I walk in and, you know, Apparently, Chad hadn't even told Justin about me at all. He was just, you know, you got room in the, you got room at your house for more. So I'm like, 
okay, this dude don't even know me. He's like, so what's your story, Cam? I'm like, I do drugs. What do you want me to say? And <laughs> it's pretty obvious. And so he's just like, okay. So he showed me around and everything. And like that night, I'm sitting at the camper, like on the phone with my friend, like, dude, you gotta come get me tomorrow. These guys talk about all they do is chores all day. Like, I'm about to be sick. Like, I'm not trying to run around and do chores. And we thought we were going to sleep in the camper. And the first night I was there, it was a leaking camper, and it leaked on my head the entire night. Like, it was like Chinese water torture, you know. Just... <laughs> so I woke up the next day, like, man, screw this. Man, like, like, I ain't doing this. And, like, we're having Bible study and stuff. And me and Justin, we didn't even talk for, like, three days. And, like, I guess he talked to my dad or something because he came out. And, like, we got to talking about wrestling and stuff. And then kind of compared it, and um, I was like, I don't know, like, I, I'm not really down with all this. Like, honestly, y'all are just a bunch of religious zealots to me. Like, I mean, I respect it. Like, I ain't gonna, like, sit around and say nothing, but it. And um, he was like, that's fine, that's fine. I was like, you know, I gave up on God a long time ago. He was like, well, that's okay, God ain't giving up on you. And that, like, that just, like, hit me right there. I think, honestly, that's where the seed got planted, just because I've never heard, like, another Christian say that. You know, we got these Christians out here that, like, you know, they say, you know, you're going to hell with that long hair and those tattoos, boy. And it's like, oh, well, thanks. That's going to bring me back. You know, that's going to bring me to you. Like, I want to be you. No, like, I did the judgment and stuff. He didn't judge me for that. Like, he's just like, that's fine, just stay as long as you want. I'm like, okay, all right. I'm like, a wee later, I'm like, you know, honestly, like, I'm ready to leave. Like, I'm like, all right, like, got through the sickness. Honestly, I thank Brian for that, because he forced me to promise that I'd stay one more day, one more day. And the next day, I'd be like, you know, they're shaking, like, dude, I gotta go, I gotta go. And he's like, no, just one more day, dude, one more day. Try to start looking at the positives, like nose wasn't running as bad. I mean, I was sick. Like, <laughs> I didn't eat nothing at Charles' house for like a week. <laughs> and then one day it just hit me, like, like I started eating again. I walked in and it was Jerry's food. So that's saying something. <laughs> I walked in and I was like ravenously hungry, and I was like, this ain't right. So I just I was sat in like three three plates of the Jerry's food. Like, Alright, this ain't so bad. And then the weekend, we come down here for a screamo night, and then Saturday we go to the drag strip. So I'm like, okay, I can either go to rehab, and like sit in a room and talk about my addiction for like hours every day, and we go to the drag strip, and I can just withdraw at the drag strip. Like, I'm cool with that. So I was like, alright, well, I'll stay. And then we go to the choir to fire. Like, I really wasn't down with it, but honestly, like, I'm ready to go this year. Like, because last, like, I, I got to think, I'm like, man, last year I thought I was awesome. I didn't even care about Jesus. I'm like, but I mean, that's kind of where it all started and everything. And, like, just things started working in me there. And, like, kids coming in, and, like, I'd be there trying to help them, you know, because, like, they're these little white kids from the suburbs that think they're, like, you know, hood rats. And I'm over there like, dude, you don't want to be in that. Like, you know, I've seen people shot at us. Like, dude, no, you don't want that. Don't put yourself in that lifestyle because when you do, you will see everybody in it wants to get out. And so, like, it just put, like, a drive and, like, something in my heart that, like, made me want to help with that. And, like, I mean, what he does is just, like, freaking amazing. I mean... I don't think I have $15,000 to spend on rehab. Um, I don't think your average crackhead's got $15,000 to spend on 30-day rehab. <laughs> so, just things started working there, and like, by, when was it, March? Was it still March, or was it like April when I got baptized? Uh, it, was, it was, yeah, it was April. I mean, I guess it was... Early April. Yeah. I guess it was just the progression of everything. <laughs> like, it wasn't like a thing that just like, the seed had been planted in, like back in high school with my wrestling coach and so like I guess it just wilted and died and like as soon as I got to the house of David something like something just started watering it and it was like you know just slowly like 
<laughs> and like, should I talk to him about being baptized when we, we get down to the, like, we get down to the mountains and we're talking, like, late at night. Like, I never had, like, man, I treasured us. We, we had a night like that in a minute, dude. What's up? <laughs> and, um, I need my dude. I just swim in and out. I know. Hey, Jason, Billy. So, like, we're down there, and he's like, you know what? I'm going to baptize you in the river. Like, we're already up here. Like, it's just, like, ironic that we're already up here. It's been on both our minds. Like, it's, we, we baptizing you in the new river. To go out to the new river, and it's, like, I don't know, like, negative 30 in the water. <laughs> he's like, you just got to take it, man. I'm like, well, I mean... If it's gonna wash away my sins and whatever, you know. <laughs> so like, I mean, like as soon as he dumped me, like from then on, it's just been like I've had this conviction in my heart. Like Amen. I'm still working on things. Lust is a big one for me, like a really big one. Um, especially the jellyfish. They're so pretty. And, like, <laughs> but like I'm trying, and I haven't used since March 12th. Um, I've had a, a couple slip ups on like smoking weed and stuff, but every time like like I've learned from it all, it's just I stopped relying on God, and so I turned to these fleshly things, and it's a temporary fix. Like yeah, it's cool and all, but like I mean, what happens is like what happens the next day when you get stressed, or the next day, you know, then, like stuff happened yesterday, stuff happened today, stuff's gonna happen tomorrow. Like, I can't smoke weed and like to get away from it all, like. The only thing that's ever got me away from it is just like, you know, I'll put my headphones in and put like Ravi Zacharias, like sermon radio on and like I was, sometimes I don't even be listening but it's still going in, you know what I mean? And I don't know, ever, ever since I've been baptized I haven't had like a single craving to use. Amen. And most people, you know, they, they tell you, oh, well, you know, getting clean is easy but like, like staying clean is the hard part, whatever man, I, I got Jesus like. It hadn't been it hadn't been a struggle at all. Like, I mean, and at the same time, I've seen so much crazy stuff going on in Winston. Like, y'all pray for Winston. Like, freaking, I, I was walking down the street on my birthday. I was sitting there like, yeah, it's been kind of a crappy day, you know. Uh, might be nice to use, whatever. There's a freaking needle laying on the ground that I probably threw out my window like six months ago. I'm just like, okay, I gotta stop thinking about this. So I call my friend Brittany, like, you know, gotta get my mind off this. And then I'm sitting in Winston the other day, like, on the good side. Like, here's Mount Tabor. That's the ghetto. That's the good side. I'm sitting on the good side at Walgreens, and there's, like, a spoon and a needle laying on the ground. I'm like, look, look at the crowd, Winston. So y'all pray for that town. Like, things have gotten really bad, and I got out just in time. And God got me out just in time. Because I don't know where I'd be if I didn't come to Justin's, man. Just like with the way things are going, so. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And I can honestly say I don't know where I'd be without this young man. Uh, he is, um, yeah, he definitely keeps me on my toes. He'd probably just be stuck on the side of I don't know, man. I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I can tell you this though, um, is, is uh, Scott and Vicky come up, um, struggles, and, and Cam's just real, what you see is what you get, he don't sugarcoat for nobody, definitely not for me, uh, but it's good too because you can be real with him, and he, he takes it for what it is, there's times that I've had to reel him in, and then there's been times when God's used him to reel me in. You know, so that's when you know discipleship is taking place because it's reciprocated. It comes back to you. When you're in need, the very ones you strengthen also strengthen you. And um, it has, it's definitely been been that case. So uh, as you guys come up, I want to pray for Cam if you guys would just extend your hand. Um, because, oh, I'm going into yes, that's, that's another thing. I mean, he was hit by a Jeep. I made something for myself. So. Yeah, he, he, he was hit by a Jeep. And now he's going to the Navy. I mean, that, that's awesome. You know, I mean, he was hit by a Jeep, hit by life, and now he's going to the Navy and hit by Jesus. So 
that, that's an awesome thing. Um, uh, and what uh, material things wrecked in his life, spiritual things have restored. So uh, I just want to th thank God for him. So if you guys would just pray with me, Father, I thank you for what you're doing in, in, in Cam. And not only in Cam, but his family. Lord, that you've given them an opportunity to uh, reconcile to one another, God, and restore each other in love. And God, I've seen that firsthand, and I thank you for it. Uh, Lord, I thank you how uh, you continue to lead Cam through all the circumstances. And Lord, I know it's a full-time job. But God, I thank you that you're more than capable of doing it. And, uh, God, I pray not just for Cam only, but for so many others that are out there. Lord, where the world says it's impossible to do something, that it's impossible for someone to change, that it's impossible for addiction to be broken, God, you said it's easy because you're the one that breaks the chains. And Lord, you commanded us to let the oppressed go free. Lord, to undo heavy burdens, God. And Lord, I thank you that you give us the opportunity to witness your glory in people's lives and you changing people's lives the same way you're changing ours. And I just pray, God, that you'll use Cam everywhere he goes, Lord, in the Navy. God knows uh, we need it in our government. We need it in every aspect of our life. And I pray that that change that you have stirred up in Cam will, will infect everyone he comes around. Lord, use his boldness and his clarity, God. Use it, God, for your glory. Use his mind. Help him not to be bored with life, but be excited for the things you have for him. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.